Hello and welcome back to the Learn Rail YouTube channel. Today we're going to be watching a video about the fifth video in the series of uh, user at GitLab. So this particular series is about users that write code or work with code and need to pull from GitLab repositories or post changes, as we call it, push changes to a repository. This specific video, however, is going to be about working with projects and the issues feature where you can give feedback to a development team, letting them know that, hey, I found this problem. I need to let you know about it. Here you go. And then the developers will see it through the system. They'll receive an email message from the GitLab if it's configured properly. And then the team on the back end will decide who is going to work on it or if they're even going to work on it. And if they're going to work on it, they'll send you back questions or say, hey, yep, we recognize this issue and uh, we will take care of it. Thank you for pointing this out. Especially if they're going to follow through with due diligence and be very professional. We know how that works out. Okay, so um, this particular video, we need to mention that uh, you need to have an existing repository. In my case, I do. I have the Warren French um, folder with the Ansible hyphen notes project. And um, the issue feature is more of a topic. And by that I mean you initiate something with a title, you put some details in it as the user of the project to, um, again, communicate that, hey, there's an issue. Or maybe you want to ask for a feature on top of the suite of um, software, this code. So you would use this topic as a discussion back and forth, or maybe hopefully one or two levels of discussion, not a really long thread that somebody forgets what, what was the original request and how much history is in this. So keep things simple. This is meant to be a very simple uh, streamlined tool to help developers and help users of the code that the developers are writing to keep things simple. Okay, so in my case, I'm going to demonstrate adding issues for uh, an existing problem. Now, I have deliberately put a problem into place, and I'm going to demonstrate a few features here. Uh, in the Ansible notes.md file, I deliberately put an extra hyphen in here, and I will prove this because um, you can see the command right below it actually has the proper syntax. And if you know anything about Ansible playbooks, which I really don't know a lot about, but I have uh, actually tested these out, so I know these are valid commands, except for this one with the double hyphen in here, because I deliberately put that hyphen, second hyphen in there. So uh, let's go here to the issues feature, where we go to the left panel, go down to issues, and click on it. And then on this page, we should see immediately the, uh, the branding with a picture of the moon and stuff going on in space. Maybe these are little bug aliens, I don't know. But there's a new issue button here, and there's a new issue button up here. Now you can edit existing issues. But what we need to do is take a look up here in the upper left corner. You have an open uh, category, which has zero presently open. There is one closed. Issue to close before the video, this video, that's why this is titled this. And all which will list all the open and all the closed um, issues that are presented. Let's, again, issues or topics. If we speak in the English language, we would say topics, but we're using this uh, GitLab tool, and they use the term issues. And I'm pretty certain that in GitHub, they also use the term issues. So let's realize that. But this video is actually for target audience of GitLab because this is literally a GitLab software um, environment. Okay, so I'm going to go back to here and since I pointed out the issue I'm going to create a new issue. There we are. And the idea is again keep things simple but concise as much as possible. I'm going to say here demonstrate um, actually let's say fix Ansible notes.md with bad 
syntax for Ansible playbook list command. That's pretty long. Hmm. I'm just going to simply keep it down to this. But again, if you were doing this, you would want to put a title that's really concise. Probably not even this many words, but you can see how long this field goes. Probably up to 255 characters. And then here, you want to put some more detail. So what were the details? Let me go ahead and um, duplicate my tab. Pull up the original project. Take a look at the Ansible Notes.md. Okay. And here we can say, within the Ansible Notes.md, specifically within the section named Ansible Inventory, there is a syntax error in the notes that should be addressed for users that are new to Ansible environments. Specifically, the following command. And then I'm going to put an extra line space and I'm going to put here the insert code. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to find the code and grab this snippet, copy using Control C, my Windows case, Control V, and there we are. All right. Now, I'm really the only developer in this environment because this is my home lab for the sake of demonstrating how to do stuff um, in the YouTube channel. But if there were other coworkers in your case, or you're dealing with the internet um, community, you would probably leave it wide open as unassigned and hit submit. But if you're working in a team environment, you may want to assign to a specific uh, coworker. In my case, if I was assigning it to me because I'm the one who found the problem I need to get back to this, I would click the assign to me. That's pretty easy. I don't need a due date because again, this is for my home environment. I'm not doing this professionally. I'm doing this to demonstrate the video, but I can provide an actual date by selecting something from the calendar. No big deal. So to start off with, this is a pretty good start. Click the create issue button down here. Make sure you don't forget that. Give the page a moment to update and then you can see the title nice big bright bold and then some um, some small amount of detail to at least get the developers started get their appetite white appetite white um, so if they have an issue they can write back if they like the issue they click the plus sign if they don't like the issue the team can decide you know uh, to downvote it and say you know this user being silly, we don't need to work with this issue. It's it's not really that big a deal, or whatever. And they can be reviewed and just simply closed. Now, at some point, you're going to end up closing the issue. And again, we saw how open issues and closed issues and all issues are listed in one of uh, th three categories. Uh, and then, if you are the developer and you decide to take this on, you might put some. Oh, we will have to simply remove hyphen. So. We will simply remove the extra hyphen from the syntax. I'm going to hit the vote up button here because I agree with it. Right that I put it in purpose. And then click here and I'm going to say create a branch. If I was working in a, in a development environment with coworkers. I would hopefully want to create a branch. Now again, keeping this title very simple helps the branch name stay very short. Because basically with this being the second issue being generated, when the branch is generated for this particular um, issue and task associated for coding and making changes, it's going to end up being two hyphen fix hyphen ansible notes dot md hyphen with hyphen bad hyphen syntax hyphen for hyphen list hyphen command. That's a lot of hyphens. That's a really long really long string of characters. So again, 
try and do your best as a user of the issues feature of a project to keep your title simple and put as much detail in the body here. Okay, so we got the create branch and now that we've done that we're going to click the create branch button and again that would be created for your team. Now see here there is the long title all lowercase characters and it put hyphens everywhere that it could actually even changed the period between Ansible notes dot MD it changed that to a hyphen as well and so when the developer deals with this they'll do a git clone they'll change branches hopefully you know if you guys have a a, a style or um, a standard operating procedure to use the title of the project and turn it into a branch name like this then you would know what you would do okay so after you are done with making changes let's go ahead and make the change real quick and I'm going to edit the file and I'm going to remove the second hyphen scroll to the bottom scroll to the bottom of the browser and commit message remove extra hyphen Keep it really simple. Commit changes. Now I really don't care in this particular case to have to go and update the branch and so on and so forth. But that's not the purpose of this particular video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click close here um, because it's really just a banner title thing. Go back to the issues. You have seen me demonstrate that I fixed the problem. Let's go ahead and address the actual issue. I'm going to pull the issue back up. And now what I'm going to do is add a new comment. Issue results by removing extra hyphen. Now because I'm the only user of this environment, that's the reason why I can't really post a comment on top of my own comment to update this and have like a, a thread actually going. So I'm going to go ahead and do a comment and close. I'm going to give it a moment. And if you notice the issues went from 1 to 0 when I hit that um, basically comment and close button. We can now see that this was actually closed and we could reopen the issue if we really had to. I don't have to. There's nobody who's going to be posting any comments about this. But I'm going to go back to the issues tab here. Now I have zero open. I have two closed. There's my title without the two hyphen because the two hyphen is the name of the branch I created in association with this title. Here's the other one that I created before the start of this video. Let's go to the all category, which also has two. Again, it lists all the open and all the closed in the all tab. And that's it. There's nothing more to demonstrate. So now I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Thank you very much for watching.